Hello, I'm Chris Fignola, JSR 352 Specification Lead, and today we're going to talk about batch applications for the Java platform. Let's start with an overview of this JSR. It introduces batch applications, which are new for Java EE7. It's available for Java SE, too. It standardizes a new application type for Java. Batch applications have been around since the dawn of the computing age, but have never been standardized in really any way, shape, or form, and, and no less so for uh, the Java platform. But this JSR changes that. It establishes best practice patterns for common practices in batch programming, like checkpoint restart, partition batch. And this is important because it increases developer productivity by taking what would otherwise be function that developers would have to build into their applications that really have very little to do with the business logic. It's more of an infrastructure issue. But this JSR takes that and pushes it down into a standardized runtime with a standardized set of programming model around it so that developers can, can quickly take advantage and by so doing satisfy key enterprise requirements like standards, skills reuse, and time to value. We're going to continue our exploration of JSR 352 by taking a look at some of the key features that it offers. It introduces a set of batch programming artifacts, which are things like readers and writers and processors, key constructs that are used to assemble batch applications. It includes a job specification language, or JSL for short, which describes how a batch application should run. It includes also a job operator interface, which provides a programmatic means to interact with, with running jobs. And it also includes some important EE7 uh, integration, which we'll talk about a little later. And while not exactly a feature, there are some key usage patterns that I want to bring to your attention, which I think you'll find helpful in understanding how to apply the technology that is given by this JSR. first feature we'll look at is the batch programming artifacts. What this does is it, it, it introduces and defines a set of key constructs that codify the batch programming model. Things like readers, writers, listeners, and, and many more constructs which are used to assemble a batch application and a batch runtime then that orchestrates the flow across these constructs based on well-known patterns. For example, the chunking pattern. Chunking pattern is designed to uh, read, process, and write a, a large data set of items. These could be um, credit postings or um, inventory records or orders or other things that are processed in bulk. The chunking pattern uses a batch loop to iteratively read, process, and write all of the items from the input data set producing some form of output in accordance with the business process at hand, and uh, does so in a, in a controlled manner that periodically checkpoints, enabling a long run to uh, be interrupted for planned or unplanned reasons, and then subsequently restarted to save time of having to start from the beginning. This is a, a key principle in, in batch processing. Continuing our look at batch programming artifacts, inserted a a short example here to uh, show you what one of them uh, might look like. Uh, the batch artifacts are simple POJOs. These, these POJO interfaces define the essential contract with the batch runtime. Here what we see on uh, the current slide is um, an item reader used in that read process item loop that, loop that we saw on the previous slide. And here what you see is some of the key interface uh, methods such as open and read that the batch runtime uses in that batch processing loop to, to first open the reader and then uh, iteratively read from it, passing the items that it returns on to the processor artifact and then the writer artifact, and doing that iteratively uh, until all input is exhausted. Uh, transactionally checkpointing along the way to ensure restartability. Let's next take a look at the job specification language, or JSL. JSL is uh, an XML document. It defines a job. A job is a batch concept that um, gives us a unit of work concept uh, for processing. So jobs are given to the system to, to process. They execute asynchronously. Once they're done, uh, results are available from the job. Uh, that's sort of the nature of the thing. Uh, JSL uh, 
scripts, if you will, uh, the batch execution sequence. Jobs are typically organized as a set of steps. Steps describe the sequence of events that need to take place in the job. For example, download a file as input, and next step, process all the items in that, in that file. JSL also provides conditional step execution so that, for example, if step one completes successfully, execute step two, but if step one fails, um, perform cleanup step number three. Additionally, JSL supports parameterization and substitution so that JSL definitions can be used as templates and can thereby be applied uh, across a, a spectrum of, of processing needs. Continuing our look at uh, JSL, we see here a, an example job that's uh, shown. It's a, a simple job consisting of, uh, of one step, and it uses the chunk pattern, which incorporates a reader, processor, and writer own. You see in the JSL that it describes uh, you know, which reader, which processor, and which writer implementations to use. You see also an example of um, substitution through uh, job parameters, which can be passed in when the job is started and substituted so that you can you know, run the job differently, tailored to your specific needs on each particular start of the job. And uh, additionally, chunks are transactional and restartable. And so uh, you know, what that means is like I described briefly before as the job step runs, it's reading through items, in this job definition, you see that every 100 items, we want to checkpoint our work, which means commit a transaction, start a new transaction, and continue. And that sets us up for restartability. So if you, know, you have a four-hour job that's running, and it's three hours in, and something wrong is found in the input, for instance, and you need to stop the job, you don't want to start back at you know, minute one. You want to start back where you left off at hour three. And so that's the idea behind restartability. We'll talk next about job operator interface. Okay, so this is the interface to the batch runtime itself. It defines a set of operations to uh, enable a, a program to act upon jobs, uh, things like starting a job, stopping a job, restart, and various uh, retrieval-oriented operations on the job repository itself, like you know, list of jobs, list of running jobs, et cetera. Uh, this is the interface for application to use to interact with, with jobs in the system, whether initiating them, stopping them, or gathering information about jobs that are running or have run in the past. I want to talk to you also about key usage patterns. Okay, so there are many usage patterns for batch, but two stand out head and shoulders above many others in that they are some of the more uh, frequently seen usage patterns. I'm talking about on-demand batch and scheduled batch. Uh, on-demand batch is an example where what's typically an online application that you know, has a user-facing uh, characteristic about it um, uses batch processing behind the scenes for cases when the user directs the application to perform actions on you know, a group of entities the processing of which would take too long in the foreground to make the user wait. And so the work needs to be spun off into the, into the background for execution, and then the user notified subsequently when the processing is finished so that the user can go in and look at the results. For example, uh, you might have a banking application that enables the user to operate on, you know, on an, uh, a particular account at a time or perform an operation on a group of accounts. When performing an operation on a group of accounts, it might be 10, 20, or more accounts at a time perhaps, waiting for the action to be performed against that whole list of accounts would take too long for the user to wait. Perfect example and use case for pushing that work to the background, executing what's the same business logic that we would use in the foreground, but just using it in the background with a batch application. Batch is good for this. It's, it's transactional. It's restartable. It, provides a history, you can go back and look at the results, et cetera. And so this is a blend of online and, and offline processing that uh, allows for a flexible and adaptive type of application. It's on-demand batch. 
Scheduled batch is the other uh, commonly um, utilized usage pattern, and it's probably the predominant pattern as well. Typically what's going on here is that there is bulk work that needs to be done on behalf of the business, and it needs to be done periodically, and um, or it might be event-driven, it might be the arrival of a message or something, but, but the key is that it's bulk, it's periodic, it's often driven by some type of a scheduler like uh, Control-M or, uh, or TWS or any of those sorts of scheduler uh, products that, that are commonly used. And the pattern is such that uh, there's a library of jobs that get used and execute various batch applications you know, based on, it might be based on time of day, time of month, um, event driven, as I mentioned before, and so forth. And the point is that this is kind of a production batch execution that does key bulk processing you know, to satisfy a variety of, of business needs, whether it's, whether it's credit scoring, whether it's fraud detection, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, in, in insurance claim adjustment, and the, 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 the use cases are really endless for this. So these are some of our key usage patterns. All right, in summary, JSR 352, batch applications for the Java platform, adds batch applications to the Java platform, as its name suggests. It does so by defining key batch artifacts, job specification language in a job offer interface to provide all the basic ingredients necessary to, to build, uh, direct, and operate batch execution. It provides a runtime supported set of patterns to promote developer productivity by doing in the runtime you know, the infrastructure types of concerns like, like checkpoint, like parallelization of partitioned batch and this sort of thing, freeing the developer from those sorts of tasks, enabling the developer instead to focus on business logic and thereby boosting developer productivity. And having a standardized batch programming model satisfies key enterprise requirements around portability, skills reuse, and time to value, all of which are important for you know, all other applications, as we've seen you know, web applications and message-driven applications and so forth, so too for batch applications, and JSR 352 helps to satisfy that need for the latter category. And I'd be remiss in our talk today if I didn't remind you to go ahead and take a look at the EE7 SDK. There's downloads available and plenty of social media to stay current so that you can stay on top of the happenings in this exciting new space. This ends our talk about JSR 352, Batch Applications for the Java Platform. Uh, this has been your speaker, Chris Vignola, and I thank you for spending your time to listen to this information. Have a great day.